So the last paper is Adam Bergasser, Increasing Minority Participation in Physics, Modeling Proven Success. Thank you very much, and thank you for giving me a chance to talk about our program here. I wanted to talk, uh, start off this uh, talk uh, about my personal path uh, to this program. Um, I'm a professor here at the Department of Physics in Center of Astrophysics and Space Sciences. I'm also a, an alumnus of this campus. I was an undergraduate about 20 years ago at Muir College, um, and so that informs part of my path here. Um, I'm going to start by just talking about uh, how I got interested in uh, thinking about a bridge program uh, for UCSD. And it actually goes back to a time when just before I came to UCSD, uh, I attended a meeting back in 2009 of the National Societies of Black and Hispanic Physicists. Um, this is just a group shot of the entire uh, conference. Um, and if you can find me, you have mad Where's Waldo skills, because I'm actually way out in the back there. Um, and you could ask, well, why am I standing so far in the back so you can't see, see me in the picture at all? Well, uh, the interesting thing about this conference that was one of my past education is what I felt while I was at the conference. Uh, here's what I felt. I don't understand the social norms. I have nothing to contribute to this conference. I feel like I'm an imposter here. Am I behaving like that awkward white guy that, that you see sometimes at conferences, uh, whether they are diversity conferences or otherwise? Uh, and do I belong here? Now, we talk a lot in, in diversity and sciences about uh, the kind of issues that minorities, minorities and sciences face uh, when they're in, uh, in a conference or in, in their classrooms. And I want to emphasize that these are not issues that minorities in sciences face. These are issues that people who find themselves in a minority position in a particular environment face. All right, so a white man can face exactly the same kind of issues that we talk about in minorities and sciences. So this was a wake up uh, call for me. Um, soon after that, I came to, uh, to UCSD and the month after I showed up, we had the Compton Cookout. Um, this was a transformative event for me, at, at the second transformative event for me because um, I felt a whole bunch of new things as a result of this. Uh, I was very angry. Uh, this was the place that I went to school. All right? I was very proud of my institution, and now I'm not proud. I was very ashamed of my institution uh, for this to be going on. Um, I was ashamed of members of my race, and I really wanted a change of culture, and I really wanted to do something. And so within the span of about six months, uh, my focus uh, in my career changed from uh, just focusing on my physics re research, which I still do, so don't worry, um, <laughs> to really thinking about how I can make a change to the culture in which I'm working in. Now, uh, in order to make a change, you have to understand what the culture is uh, uh, quantitatively as a scientist. Um, this is a measure of the uh, fraction of African-American bachelor's uh, degrees earned uh, from 1996 to 2010. I hope you can see that this is not the trend that we want in physics and bachelor degrees. This has gone down by a factor of two over the course of this period. Uh, if we look at PhD degrees in several fields, uh, in fact, the physics and astronomy degrees, which are the bottom two lines, uh, are both doing, uh, have done the worst, I would say, out of all the sciences, uh, and have continued to decline over this period. Now, if you look at the very bottom line there, that's astronomy, and that might look like a kind of funny curve. The reason it's so funny uh, is that this is small number statistics. This is now just the number of astronomy PhDs earned by African Americans over that period, and I can actually name every single one of those bars. Now, many of these bars have gone on to have fantastic, amazing careers, which is one of the patterns that you will see when you're working in, in uh, working with minorities in the sciences. You have to be spectacular, especially spectacular, to survive in this field. Uh, and so this has also informed my research on this. Now, of course, the consequences of not having a lot of PhDs in the minorities gives you the same issue when you look at faculty members. This is just breaking down by different institutions. I forgive you if you have a hard time seeing the very thin blue and, and tan lines at the top of those graphs. Those are all the African-American Hispanic faculty members in the US teaching at these institutions in physics. Um, and here at UC, if we look at the 10 campuses, uh, uh, and this is based on a study uh, by Donna Nelson back in 2003, if we look at the 10 campuses at UC, uh, we have 279 physics faculty, and a single one of those is an African-American faculty member. Uh, he is at the UC Berkeley. He's actually a he is actually a colleague of mine in my sciences and, and, and Loma Star Research. He's also the VC of Equity and Inclusion. Um, and so that gives us a fraction of about 0.3% of African-American in the UC system versus about 13% in the general population. And so one of the things we do in physics is, what are the big problems? Well, the big problems are when you don't know the answer to with an order of magnitude. Well, here's a problem we don't have the answer, or at least the right representation, to within a factor of 50. 
So if we're looking at a big problem in the sciences, here's one. All right, and it's not just in physics. Math, computer science, chemistry have similar numbers. Now, I should say that this was a study based in 2007. I've gone back and looked at the uh, faculty ra rosters uh, since then, and uh, Gibor is still the only African-American faculty in the UC system, and he's about to graduate. And so um, when we talk about the leaky pipeline or the broken pipeline, the pipeline in the UC system is about to become empty. It's about to become empty, and that should scare you. Okay, so. All right, so I've scared you, so what's the hope? So uh, it turns out that uh, there are uh, many programs that have been developed over the past uh, 10 years to address exactly this problem. I want to highlight one that we've modeled. Um, this is a, a bridge program uh, that's uh, started by Kayvon Stassen at Vanderbilt University. It's a Fisk Vanderbilt master's program. Fisk is a historically black college in Nashville, Tennessee. Vanderbilt is just down the road from there, uh, an R1 institution. And they spent the last 10 years developing this incredible program uh, that uses research-validated selection and assessment criteria uh, to select students and also keep track of them, make sure that they are persisting in this PhD program. And so they continually monitor these students, uh, they give them plenty of professional development seminars. And as a result, I think actually the most important number on this plot is the last very small bullet, which is that they have 80% persistence in, in, uh, to PhD in their program. And you would have a hard time finding any institution in the sciences in any field that has an 80% persistence to PhD. All right, so this is a fantastic program. Um, if you want to learn more about it, there's a nice paper on this. Um, I don't have time to go through it, but the authors, the, the, the coordinators of this program have also gone out of their way to make sure that this is a program that can be replicated. And so they have set up a web page that provides uh, both the sort of description of the program, the kind of tools that they use to assess the students, uh, and, and also ways of selecting and, and, and sort of managing students and making sure that they succeed. And so we've used this uh, information, and we're not the only ones, to now design a program uh, to bring students here to UCSD. Now, now, uh, I should also mention the other important pas aspect of this is, is institutional investment. Um, this is just a slide of all the funding that this program has raised over the past uh, 10 years. Uh, you'll notice that there are seven NS career proposals associated with this, and so this is not just a matter of, well, let's, let's do something on the side for, for diversity. This is actually the research focuses of seven NSF career fellows. Um, now, the other thing I point out is that about 15% of this funding uh, comes directly from Vanderbilt and Fisk, and so they've actually made an institutional investment that they want this program to succeed. Uh, so how do we how do we try to mimic something like this? Well, unfortunately, we don't have an HBCU in our neighborhood or down the street, um, but we have plenty of HBCUs uh, in the United States uh, that are interested in having their students come to UCSD. Uh, this is a list of the top uh, African American bachelor producers in the United States uh, over this uh, short period, and on the top is Morehouse College. Well, last year Morehouse College actually came to visit us. Uh, this was uh, something that was organized by Willie Rockward, who is the uh, the Morehouse College um, chair of the department there, uh, and they came and brought about. 15 to 20 students uh, to see what UCSD was about. And uh, you know, so this is an opportunity for us to take, and we took it. Uh, we applied for a UC HBCU program that's supported by the UC Office of the President, um, and we uh, we awarded that program. And uh, we are going to be having our first uh, class come in this summer. Uh, they'll be coming in to do summer research project, but we're also going to make sure that we track those students before and after the summer research project, so that they have an opportunity uh, to maintain their trajectory uh, towards a graduate degree. Um, we're also providing some GRE preparation. But I think the more important thing is that one of the things we learned from the Fisk Vanderbilt program is that this is not a one-sided model, all right? We don't just go in and help black students get PhDs. We go in and have partnerships uh, with those institutions so that we continue the research together uh, and that we can have this as a sustainable model. Uh, I want to point out that this is not possible without the one resource that I've tapped in quite heavily here at uh, UCSD, and that's the STARS program. Uh, and particularly, Veronica uh, Henson Phillips has been incredibly effective in providing us the infrastructure to provide training for these students that's uh, beyond the research training, actually providing them skills uh, for applying for graduate school, applying for national graduate fellowships. Uh, this is an incredible program. We should be very uh, happy, happy for Veronica and the OGS for, for having this. Uh, here's just some pic pictures of the Bridge Fellows that will be coming this summer. Uh, I'll point out that we're selecting a very wide range of years, so second year through fourth year students, and a wide range of, of different uh, degrees, um, because uh, we want them to be in the pipeline for a long period of time. So the earlier we can get them started in research, I think the better. And I should say, we are in competition here. These students are 
are selected by us, but they have an opportunity to uh, also go to other programs. And so we actually have to be very competitive in this. Now, I'm giving the flashing stop sign, so I'll just finish my last slide here, is that this is just one step. Uh, it's actually hard to have a program with Atlanta uh, that's, uh, uh, that's uh, sustainable and easy to run. And so we've uh, about 25 UC, CSU, and community college faculty are again using that same Vis Vanderbilt model and now trying to form a regional collaboration because what we do have here in, in Southern California is a large number of Hispanic institutions, Hispanic serving institutions. In fact, uh, uh, so 11 out of the 12 CSUs in Southern California are Hispanic serving institutions. And so this is something we're moving forward with now. And I'm just going to leave my notes here and not comment on them, and maybe we can talk about them at the end. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Sure.